Hi, I'm Bob Alsop with Shop Saber CNC. Around here they call me Router Bob. In this video, we're going to explore making face frames out of MDF. I call these engineered face frames, and I think you're gonna like this. We recently did a face frame cabinet and it came out really nice. You know, we made it eight feet long, so it was a big cabinet like a face frame shop would make. And we made the box on the machine and everything came out good. But Sean had to make the face frame in his shop at home and it was made out of solid wood like anybody else would. And it came out really nice. But I got to thinking, well, if you're putting MDF or shake or mission doors on the cabinets and they're gonna get painted, that probably means the face frame's gonna get painted also. So there's no need for wood grain, so why not make a face frame out of MDF? And I call these engineered face frames. We had a couple challenges that we had to overcome first. Before we get started on this, let's go talk to Sean about this. Sean, do you remember the face frame cabinet we made recently? Sure. You know, it came out really nice. Now, the router did a great job making the box, but the face frame had to be made the traditional way because you made it. Right. But now, what if the cabinet's gonna be painted? Why does the face frame have to be solid wood? Why couldn't we make that out of MDF, the same stuff we make the doors out of? We could give it a shot. You know, something else, what if I could make beaded face frames? Well, I like that idea because if you wanna make a beaded face frame, you either need a separate machine or do it with applied if molding. If we can make MDF doors, we can make beaded face frames too with the machine. I believe it. There's one little problem to solve, and that has to do with the inside corners, but I think I've got a solution. All right, why don't you get started on that? I'll get some material ready. Let me get a sample and we'll test it out and then we'll make the face frame. Sounds good. Perfect. We're looking at the cabinet in mosaic. Now, uh, these are parameters. I added a couple parameters. One was the frame dado, because what this does is this automatically extends the ends and the partitions so that they dado into the back of the face frame. I wanted that interlocked. That's part of the engineered concept. And I changed some other variables here uh, to make it easier for Sean to actually uh, assemble the cabinet. All right, now let's look at this in uh, the product viewer first. This is what the cabinet looks like. All right, that's pretty nice. So, but here's, here's the problem you got. How do I know what size that face frame is? Now I can print a drawing out, but I'll show you a little technique that I do all the time. Go to SketchUp, right, I would hit High Detail. And SketchUp's gonna open up, and this is what our cabinet looks like. And we can click that and look at it, it looks pretty good. All right, there's the face frame. Now at first, we we'll hit that, I'm gonna select the cabinet and right click until it's exploded. Okay, and now it'll break it into components like that. But watch this. I can actually turn things off. So there's the face frame, but I really want to turn everything else off. So the only thing that's left is the face frame. All right, so there's the face frame. Now I can save that file and open that file up in vCarve Pro and I'll have my geometry. Okay, now I've opened up VCar Pro and created a job here. Now let's open up that SketchUp file. And there it is. All right, so what we'll do is we'll get rid of that. And we'll get rid of that. And there's the geometry we need to create the face frame out of MDF. Our first real challenge in this project was figuring out how to deal with the openings for the doors. Because if you cut the openings out with a round bit, you get rounded corners, and that's probably not gonna work. So we had to figure out a technique to get rid of the rounded corners. And what we ended up doing was applying a V-carve technique where you use a tapered bit and then it climbs out in the corners, just like you do 3D engraving. And we found that we could use a Vortex 2215 for that because it actually has a one and a half degree angle. Now, let me show you in VCar Pro how all this works. Now, one of our biggest challenges on this project is to figure out how to deal with the inside corners of the door openings because if you just cut them out with a router bit, you're gonna have radius corners. That's probably not gonna work. So what I wanted to employ was the V-carve toolpath setup. And here's 
basically what I did. This is just to show you, all right? Let's open this up. I used a V-bit, and for, for this demonstration, I've got a 90 degree so you can really see it. And then I said, I'm gonna use a clearance tool so that it creates a separate tool path for this. And we'll just run this in simulation. So the first thing that happens is it cuts that pocket out. That's the first tool path. Then the second tool path uses the V-bit. And you see, this is the 3D engrave. If I, if I turn that tool path on, you'll see what it does. It actually comes up here and climbs out. And that's what gives you that inside cut. Whoops, let's get that. All right, so that, that's the concept that we want. We just can't use that big of an angle. Now, this is a drawing that I got from Vortex, and this is a 2215. It, it, this is a tapered uh, bit with an eighth inch radius on the top. But here's what I wanted to know, what is this angle? Because I wanted to use this angle part of the bit, which is one and a half degrees, to actually do that bevel. So that's where that came from. Now, let's take this idea back and let's look at our example and let's see what happens. Now, let's look at how we would use the 2215 bit rather than the, the V bit I used earlier. So let's open this up. Okay, first off, I'm going through the material plus the 16th inch radius on the tip. Okay, I'm using a one and a half degree bit, still using the up shear, the eighth inch, and that's gonna create my two tool paths. Okay, I don't need that tool path. All I need is this one because it's gonna cut all the way through, and when it does, it's gonna separate that. So if you, no if you notice in here, it's two passes. It's gonna go about a half inch deep, then it's gonna go through, and when it goes through, it'll clean the corners out. So let's preview that, double click, and there's our opening. So that's how we use the, the engraved tool path method with that 2215 bit, because that gives us a small angle. And the actual offset is about 20,000, so we, it's easy to calculate that. Now, here's the actual files that I'm going to use to machine the face frame. And you notice there's a backside setup and a front setup. And the reason I did that is just, it just makes it easier to manage your geometry. So what happens first? Well, the first thing that we want to do is we want to cut these dados. And that's what you see here. You can see those. So those get cut out. All right. And then you have what I call a square cut. All right. And that's what this is. And this is basically using the technique that uh, Mosaic uses when you have backside machining. It does the machining on the backside, then creates a squaring cut so that when you flip it over, that squaring cut goes against the pins on the other side. That's what makes it work. So the first thing we do on this is to, is to turn, cut the backside of the machine, cut those dados. Once again, those fit over the box itself. Then we come to the front side and there's the tool pass. Now, there's, there's a bunch of extra tool paths here. And the reason I'm doing more, more than just a simple basic frame, but to start with, what we're doing is uh, this V-carve and this outside. And here's what it's going to show. Do that in 3D. So the V-carve bit is going to be what you saw. And if I cl click on that... Okay, so, so now what we've done is we've cut the inside out and squared the corners, and then this cuts the outside. So that's the front of our face frame. Once we kind of mastered what I call the basic face frame, I got to thinking about beaded face frames. What if we could actually machine beads on the insides of those openings? Uh, because that's very, very popular. And I, I thought, well, you know, we do MDF doors with different tools and shapes. We should be able to do the same thing for beads. So let me show you how we figured out the technology for beaded face frames. Now let's take a look at this. This is actually Rhino and this will show you how the shapes actually came out. So this is the beaded edge. Well what is that? Well this edge right here, th this tool right here is, is the 2215. We've already done that. So we created the tool path that creates that edge. Now we're going to take this bit, this is a vortex bit, and we're going to create this bead and the center line's here and the center line's here. So with those two tool paths, that creates that bead. This is down from a surface about 10 thousandths. 
All right, then we come around here, and now remember that bead comes over here also, so we have to create some clearance. So this is a flat, that's eighth of an inch, so that's the center line of an eighth of an inch tool. And then this, we're doing the same type of setup that we did earlier on the 3D engrave, except this is a 30 degree bit. Uh, to give us that square corner. So when we put all that together, then we're gonna get the bead. So what you see here, these are actually offsets. And these offsets tell, tell me where to put the center of the tool path so that when we're done, we get this shape. All right, now let's come back here and let's look at what these other tool paths were. Because I showed you the tool paths of how we actually create what I call the basic face frame, or I call them engineered face frames. Now let's look at the rest of this. So if we come over here, you'll start to see these offsets and they're colored. They correspond to what we looked at a while ago. All right, so what are these? Well, this first one actually is a tool path we won't use. This one we will. What this is going to do is this is going to create that little corner with that 30 degree bit. And if you notice down here, VCAR Pro, basically, if the, if the eighth inch tool won't clean it out, it'll actually clip those corners out. All right. Then the next thing we're gonna do is this flat cut. And we can look at it that way and you can see, so that's the eighth of an inch tool that forms that, that uh, flat bottom. Okay, then this is, an, this is another bonus tool path we're not gonna use. Okay, then these are the beads. So there's two tool paths with the bead. That actually forms that bead in here. Okay, here's another bonus tool path we're not going to use because, once again, we don't need it. We needed this one that goes with it. That's the one that cuts the opening out. We've already seen that. And then, finally, this cuts the outside. Now, let's look at a simulation. Now, you've noticed for the simulation, I've actually just selected the tool paths that we'll use. And this will be the same when we generate code. We, we don't select those that were generated as part of the VCAR part. We just want those, those edges. So let's run uh, preview all visible. So here's what's gonna happen. That'll be an opening, that'll be an opening, that'll be an opening, that scrap. And if we look at it, you'll see the, but you can't really see it in here, but, but you can see that there's, there's a bead around that frame. So that's how we generate the beaded face frame. So that's the process. You machine the backside, you turn it over, and you run that. So we're creating two types of face frames. One I call a basic engineered frame, and one is a more deluxe one that has beading. Before we send the files out to Sean, let's stop and talk about the machine part of this project. We're going to be using a Shop Saber IS-408. Now, that's one of the machine tool grade CNC routers here, and which means it has ball screws, all right? Why is that important? Well, those cuts that we made to form those beads around those openings are really difficult to make, especially over the whole table. You're just not going to be able to do that consistently with a rack and pinion machine. So you're pretty much gonna have to go with a machine of, of our caliber. Now let's talk about the marketplace. You know, within our marketplace, we offer tremendous value, and, and a lot of that's because we make the machines here in Minnesota. Most of our competitors are buying Chinese machines and either buying them with some control or sticking a control on here. Well, they're, they're just a form of a dealer's, all that is. Now let's talk about dealers. The other thing we don't do is we don't use a dealer network. Here's what that means. If you buy your machine from a dealer who probably works for a distributor, about a third of what you're paying for the machine is not buying a machine, it's paying that overhead. We don't do that. We sell direct. So when you pay $100 on a machine, you get $100 worth of machine. Now, let's send the files out to Sean. Sean, did you get the files I sent you? I sure did. And boy, am I glad we got an automatic tool changer. Six tools to run, there's a lot of work to get done. This project is gonna really showcase what a machine tool grade CNC router can do. I believe it. This completes part one of our engineered face frame video. If you'd like to see part two, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you need more information, you can contact us at shopsaber.com. And be sure to check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Thank you for watching.